So, this is Oscura. A cheap, art-heavy platformer for the Android operating system whose one version is compatible with both phones and tablets. I first discovered Oscura when I was browsing the Google Play Store with an old gift card that had a dollar left on it. I was looking for something aside from the typical games that people aim for with mobile devices, such as Angry Birds, Cut the Rope, Where's My Water, and so on and so forth. I managed to find it in all of its strange glory, sitting at number 129 in the marketplace. I really like the art style from the screenshots, so I decided to take a chance on it. When I opened the app for the first time, I was met with disappointment. The introductory logos took some time to load, and the opening cutscene prior to the title was really compressed and grainy. When you get past the title screen, you're greeted with a level select, and there are only 12 levels. Uh, in fact, one of this game's weakest flaws is its lack of longevity. But more on that later. At this point, I was feeling kind of worried. Sure, I mean, I'd only spent a dollar on it, but I was genuinely looking forward to this game being fun. All I'd seen thus far were load times, compression, and Angry Birds title and level select screen, and, well, then I tapped the first level. Fortunately, all my doubts were promptly assuaged. The game's art direction is fantastic, drawing cues from the style of Limbo but not from its presentation. By this, I mean the game's foreground is silhouetted and backgrounds are primary solid color, but it sometimes makes the game more personable than it does disturbing. Think Patapon for an example of what I mean. The game definitely does have an intense atmosphere though, which is greatly aided by the fantastic sound design. And the color contrast of the backgrounds combined with the glowing effect around your character can create a genuinely beautiful effect to look at. Even if YouTube's compression kind of completely distorts it. I may also be alone in this thought, but the main character looks kind of adorable if you let him stand still and watch his idle animations, or even if you just have him riding on top of a giant eyeball. As you progress throughout the game, environments tend to stray from an open world or forested areas that you begin with and progress further into caves and claustrophobic factory-like settings. Amazingly enough, the touchscreen controls hold up all the way through, even the more complex areas. There are two main control schemes for this game, uh, the first of which divides your screens into halves. You touch the direction you wish to run, and tapping the other side at any given moment will make you jump. This is actually pretty impressively responsive in my experience, and will probably be the preferred control type for tablet users. The other scheme just gives you a couple of virtual buttons, which doesn't work quite as well, but I find that it's much better for phones because your thumbs don't cover as much of the screen. Uh, this game also does function perfectly with a keyboard. Uh, the W, A, S, D, or arrow keys make you run, space will jump, and shift slows down time. I can also happily report that the PS3 controller works pretty well in the sense that you move with the analog stick, and touching any other button on the pad will both slow time and jump simultaneously. Oh, wait. That's not how it's supposed to work, is it? Well, in any case, keyboards do genuinely work well, and the touchscreen is super responsive. The aforementioned ability to slow down time isn't incredibly important either. Um, I found myself not using it very often. It's not required in any level, and really its only purpose is to make some of the platforming easier for beginners. Typically speaking, though, I prefer to play with the extra challenge of not using it. Guess that makes me a masochist. You would be especially correct with this game in that assumption, because when you die, even once, you lose all ability to attain a perfect rating for the level. This actually gets to be extremely frustrating because the pause menu completely lacks a restart button. If you want to start over, you have to load back to the main menu, tap the level you want, load the level, and start again. That might not sound too bad in theory, but in execution, it's a difference between taking 20 to 30 seconds to complete the whole process when you really should just be able to tap a restart button and quickly be back at the beginning of the level. This lack of a restart button can get especially frustrating toward the end of the game, where a few hitbox issues become rapidly apparent. From time to time, you'll randomly die on gears that you don't actually touch, and the flying enemy of this game has antlers that apparently extend into infinity, because there is one frame in his animation that will kill you immediately despite clearly not contacting him. The hitbox issues are definitely not something that you want to see in a platformer, but fortunately I only ever ran into issues with it on level 9. It's extremely annoying when it happens, but it seems to be a problem that's only rarely run into. And that really is the common theme with Obscura. To be candid, the game is absolutely fantastic, but it's full of little immersion-breaking issues that really take you out of the experience. Jumping while sliding down hills sometimes follows your forward momentum rather than bringing you upward, sometimes you glitch through a ceiling and die, sometimes you jump while running in a direction and you just don't get any distance out of the jump for seemingly no reason, 
Sometimes enemies kill you from much further away than they typically should, and sometimes they don't kill you at all. Hell, sometimes the game's performance will take a nosedive in a super simple area, and then run perfectly smooth in graphically complex zones. It just makes no sense. But in the end, what really makes all these issues so frustrating is that it's easy to see how genuinely fantastic Oscura could have been without them. You see, it suffers somewhat from the Uncanny Valley effect, and if you don't know what I mean by that, you can Google it, it's very simple to understand. Uh, as it stands, the game is a good platformer that could have used just a little bit of extra polish to genuinely make it shine as a great game. If you can grab it for $5 or less, I would definitely still recommend it, however, and it's probably one of my favorite games on my tablet. Just keep in mind that if the price is raised to $10, you're being ripped off for the lack of content. And it's published by MTV, so I highly doubt it'll ever see a real content update. I'd love to eat my words on that, but for now, from me, Oscura gets a single thumbs up and a modest recommendation. If you enjoyed this video, please remember to leave a like and a comment, and until next time, this has been Baja, and remember, be cool, be wild, but most of all, be groovy.